Good morning, Satan. Good morning, good morning. So that was really special. I can see some tears already as you were thinking about your mom and some of the things that you might say. But I just want to say to Chosen Generation, there was a line in the song that you did today and you don't understand how important that line is where it says, the Lord is my shepherd. And so we're going to hear all about that today. And who here has ever herded animals? Anyone here ever herded animals? I knew I, knew I was going to see a hand over there. Okay, so we've got one person. So you might be able to give us some, uh, some more information on that. And um, what kind of animals did you herd? Sheep. Oh, cows. cows and sheep. Cows and sheep. Which ones were the easier? Cows. Cows. Okay. Well, at home, I struggle with herding just one animal, right? It's not Dwight. We have a dog named, <laughs> we have a dog named Rolo, okay? And we always sing this one song particularly for Rolo, right? And we thoroughly believe that it's his life song in tune. It's the song just made for him. It must play in his head all day long. It's from the Little Mermaid. I want to be where the people are. That song, because that is Rolo. He wants to be where the people are all the time. If you're in the lounge and, and there's like a whole big open space, he doesn't go lay in his nice little bed over there or on the floor. He sits right here by your leg and he has to like, and then he pushes into it. That's Rolo. And you know what, if you're sitting down on the couch and you just so much as twitch your leg to stand up, he's up like a shot and ready to like stride into battle with you and go wherever you're going right at your leg side. No matter what room I'm in, Rolo is there right underneath my feet. And you know, it's fun and it's sweet, okay, but do you know how annoying it is when you need to get somewhere? or you're carrying something heavy, because then you're coming down the small passageway and you're carrying something heavy, or I've got a baby that's like, like writhing and kicking because she doesn't want to get her nappy changed, and I'm trying to get past Rolo, and he's just standing there looking up at me, and, and then you go, mind, Rolo, mind, and then he just, not like a normal dog, would turn around and walk away, okay? He, he, just, he just stands looking at you, and then he goes, that's all he does, and then he's like, mind, Rolo, mind, and then... And then there's a little bit to the side, and then a little bit to the side, and you're just like, mind, Rolo, mind, and he's just like, and then you go this way, then he goes this way, and it's just, and then eventually, after a long while, he starts to move like a lot, and you're like, okay, this is it, and then he just turns like this, and now he's blocking the whole passageway off, and that's it, that's Rolo, and it's actually some of Everly's first words were, mind, boy, mind, so that's because of how often we say that. But apparently, herding sheep, <laughs> if you know the right tips and tricks, is a lot easier, okay? But so, I actually looked online and saw some tips for herding sheep, right? You can actually find that online. I mean, there's videos for everything. There's, there's all sorts of articles about everything. So, some of the things that they said, and maybe this would have been, imp this would have been helpful for, for our people before they started. They said, sheep probably respond more to proper care and attention than any other farm animal. So you should have given some nice attention to your sheep, you know. You should have just patted them nicely and said, come sheepy, we're going to go to the front, okay? Maybe that would have helped. For the most part, the labor is not hard, but they do require quality time and quality labor. So you should have taken them out to the movies and spent some time with them, and maybe they would have all gone in exactly the same way. You, sh <laughs> you should have spoken to them nicely. If sheep aren't familiar with where you want them to move, you may need several people to act as herders. Because if you're taking sheep to a brand new place and they've never been here before, they don't really know where you want them to go, and they end up going backwards like these ones did over here, or when Pastor Paul took it randomly that way. So your sheep need to know where they want to go or else you're going to need extra herders. So maybe we should have had extra people helping. Always move sheep slowly and calmly and quietly. I didn't see any of those happening. We were, we were anything but calm. Don't allow splinter groups to develop. As in make sure they all stick together. Because if one goes off by themselves, it's over for all of them. Now this I didn't know to move an individual's sheep, and this, this I don't know, maybe Ali can, and, and Barbara can, can tell us if this is true, okay, but we had a good laugh about this. To move individual sheep, so if you just want one sheep to move who's not moving, 
hold the sheep under its jaw and push its dock or its go button. Did you know that? <laughs> I didn't know that. So there is some sheep herding tips the next time you need to herd some sheep, right? Now, one time Dwight and I were camping at the Breda River. I don't know who else has ever camped there. But we were on this campsite that was like right on the banks of the river. And at the top of like a big cliff, it was like a working farm. So we had to come down this cliff down like a really steep. And we didn't have the duster then. We still had the Taz. And the, I mean, the Taz is a bit scary coming down a really steep, really, really steep drive to get to this campsite. But huge parts of this farm, it looked almost Karoo-like. So it was like deserty with just like rocks everywhere and some thorn bushes and that kind of thing. And one day I went for a walk around the farm and I kind of, I kind of wanted to go to like the cliff edge, like right above where we were camping, so that I could like shout down to Dwight and say, hello, like I'm up here, look at me. Yeah. But as I was getting there, quite far off in the distance was this big herd of sheep. They kind of like roamed around the farm. So sometimes they were close by, sometimes they were far away. Today they were far away. But as I got closer to the cliff edge, the side uh, right, right behind where I wanted to go, I could hear a sheep bleating. Now, what sound does a sheep make? Okay, but now this was a baby sheep. So what sound does a baby sheep make? <laughs> that was actually really good. <laughs> and as I got closer, I realized that there was a lamb in like a little bit of trouble. Um, it was in a bush and its leg was like stuck in between like a rock and a bush. And so I went over and I tried to get its leg free. But now obviously I'm not a shepherd, so it didn't know who I was. And it probably thought, danger, danger. Like I don't know what it thought because then it immediately started like freaking out and like kicking everywhere. And I'm trying to help it and I'm trying to like talk to it calmly. And it's just like, Mah! that's the sound it was making. And I'm trying to get it free because I want to help the sheep because it's all alone by itself. And I'm trying to calm it down and get his leg free. And it's just panicking and jumping and getting himself stuck further. And eventually it works. And the lamb gets free. I managed to just like rip its leg out. It didn't get hurt, but I managed to like get it free. And then it kind of looks at me. Now it's calm, now that it's free. And then it looks at me like, okay, now what? And I'm like, dude, I got nothing. That was all I had. Like, go, go be with your own kind over there. I'm, I'm done. And then this lamb does saunter off, but it doesn't go to the big group of sheep over there. It just starts walking towards the cliff edge. Now I'm, a, I'm panicking now, and I'm like, no, I thought I've just like released this little lamb, and now I'm sending it to like a more tragic death. So I'm running, and I'm like trying to get in between the cliff edge, and I'm like trying to, no sheep, man, no. I'm like trying to talk lamb to it, and I'm like, man, just go, go. And I'm trying to like herd it away, but it doesn't want me to like go and pick it up. So I'm trying to like herd it away, herd it away, not helping, and I'm like jumping from side to side. And I don't know, eventually something kind of worked and I'm like trying to herd it away and it's getting the picture, probably because I was scaring it jumping around. And then we're trying to get it away. And then in between all of this, I noticed that there was one sheep coming away from the, from like the flock over there. And this thing's like, nah, rah, like going crazy because this was probably the mother sheep now looking for her lost baby. And then I have visions of this thing now ramming me because... That has happened before at a different camp that we were at. And I'm like, I can't be ran by a second sheep over here. And it's a cliff edge, and then I'm going to go over. No, 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 this is not happening. I'm trying to get the sheep to go away. Eventually, eventually, lonely lamb got back to his flock. Herding sheep is not easy. <laughs> No, uh, that's like my only experience that I have with it, but I'm, not, I'm no expert. But herding sheep is not easy. Now, I know that mothers sometimes feel like they're herding sheep at home some days, especially if they have two or three or four or more kids. Then it feels like really unruly wild animals or a whole gaggle of little lammies or even a whole troop of rollos going crazy. But God knows what it's like. He gets it. Can we read together? We're going to read from Isaiah 40. So it's Isaiah 40, and we're going to read 9 to 11. Now, 
Now this verse says, this passage says, you who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See his rewards are with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and he carries them close to his heart and he gently leads those that have young. I want to reread verse 11. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This passage of scripture, this particular verse, I believe that there's something for every single person here today in Isaiah 40 verse 11. And we're going to look at that. For the first group, God leads his flock with great care and compassion. God knows all about leading a flock, leading sheep, because the Bible says we are like God's sheep. And he's our shepherd. He's our good shepherd. If you're part of God's family, you are part of his flock. And the Bible says God leads his flock. He leads you, every single person here, with great care. And like a good shepherd, he knows all the tips and the tricks for leading you, you specifically. He speaks gently to you. He pays attention. He knows you inside and out. He knows your strengths. He knows every single one of your weaknesses, and that doesn't scare him. He knows when you're going off the path, and he gently leads you back onto the right path. He knows when you are stuck, not in bushes, but in bad situations, in addictions, he knows about it. He knows when you can't get out. And he helps you to get free. And he puts himself between you and the cliff's edge to guide you away from falling. That's your God. That's your good shepherd. He knows where he's taking you. Because he has a plan for your life. And so you can trust him. And all of this is true for every single one of us here today. There's no black sheep too bad for God. There's no lost sheep that cannot be found by him. He cares and he loves you deeply. There are some of you here today who woke up this morning and you were dreading this day. Mother's Day, it brings pain. Because maybe you didn't know your mother. Or maybe she wasn't someone to celebrate. If you've never experienced the comfort and the grace and the loving arms surrounding you, the softness of a mother's touch, I can tell you right now, it exists for you today in God's arms. And it can be found right there. Because as the great shepherd, that is what he promises you. Your shepherd knows your name. He knows every hair on your head. He knows you're coming and you're going. He knows your thoughts. He knows everything about you. And he loves you. The second group this speaks to, he gathers the lambs into his arms and he holds them close to his heart. Who are the lambs? Are they the big sheep covered in wool threatening to ram people? No, it's the little ones, the young ones. So this verse is actually, I think, speaking directly to the kids. The youngsters among us, all the kids here, put your hands up in the air. Like, wave them, wave them around. Yeah, there we go. There's some good things. Tevin, you're way too old. Put your hand down. <laughs> now, I want you to take this hand, and do you know where your heart is? Your heart is over here on this side, okay? This side, right? Now, take this hand and put it right by your heart, like you're bringing something close to your heart. You got that? Yes. That is what the Bible says God does with you. He holds you close in his arms. He holds you close to his heart. 
Now, I watched my daughter, Everly, when she's got some of her toys, some of her soft toys that she particularly loves. She picks them up and she pulls them close to her chest like this and then she puts her head on it and she goes, oh, and she strokes it. God loves you that much. He pulls you into his arms and maybe he does say, oh, maybe, maybe he might not use that word, but he's sure thinking it. And more. And when you're close to someone's chest like that, you're also really safe and really secure. God protects his lambs. He keeps them close. He covers them with his love. God gathers the lambs and holds them close to his heart. Now, I do think that God is particularly saying that to kids, but I think it does apply to everyone. God holds you close to his heart. The third group of people, those who have young of their own, he gently leads them. This is one of my favorite verses, and I've shared it with hundreds of parents, and now as a parent myself, I deeply hang on to it. I I hang on to it dearly. If you yourself are a mother here today, or a father, and maybe you just feel worn out, you don't know what you're doing. Am I going to make it? How are we going to get through this issue that I'm facing? And every day you face a million and one responsibilities and the same amount of anxieties about your kids and their future and how you're going to help them through this world and the things that this world is facing and everything that they're facing. And it doesn't change whether you're a mom of one or a mom, who, a mom who, of a 50-year-old, am I right? It, you, you don't, Auntie Barbara, do you lose those, those anxieties? Do you still worry about your children? All the time. Well, you know the saying, heavy is the head that wears the crown, but guess what? You don't have to wear that heaviness because there's someone gently leading you, guiding you, someone who is wearing that heaviness for you. What an incredible encouragement that the great shepherd looks and sees moms and sees dads and says, I see you, I know It's hard, and I want to say to you particularly through this verse that I'm holding your hand, moms and dads. I'm holding you. I'm helping you through it all. I'm the one who leads you. Come, trust me. I'm here, and I go before you. And as parents, you get a double encouragement in this verse because now you know that he also gathers the lambs into his arms and he cares about your children probably more than you ever will, which is an unfathomable thing. And he cares about their future too. So you can trust him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms. He carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. That's your God. That's your shepherd, your good shepherd, and those are the promises that he makes to you today and every day. This passage is for all of us here today, young, old, parent, child, mom, dad, whoever. And today, I actually want us to take some time to pray. There are many here who've been part of God's flock for a long time. You know his love. You know his compassion. You know his understanding. You've felt it. You've been led by him. You know what it's like. But there are many here who don't. There are many here who actually just stuff has happened and and you don't want to. You don't want to know God. You, You don't want anything to do with him. But the Bible says, and we believe that the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. And so we are going to pray today together for those among us who desperately need it. So if it's okay, I'm going to ask us all to stand.